So the first boot on this list can be dressed up, it can be dressed down, and I love it because it has a storied history. In fact, one of the early ancestors of this trendy boot is the M1904 marching shoe. And if you know your military history, the M1904 was an excellent military boot for the U.S. Army when they entered World War I. That being said, as soldiers gave feedback, spent more time in the trenches, they wanted something that was more durable, they wanted something that was more water resistant with better traction, so the M1917 was eventually released. During World War II, we saw American soldiers enter the European front wearing M42s. So what's the piece of footwear? with this storied history, gentlemen, the classic derby boot. Now, the classic derby boot comes in a variety of styles, colors, construction, and materials. All of that has an effect on whether or not the boots are going to be a bit dressier or they're going to be more casual. Now, this derby boot right here is going to be on the more casual side. Why? Well, a few reasons. First up, let's look at that color, a medium brown. Not a dark brown, not anything that's going to be mistaken for a dress boot from a distance. This right here is a color that is more casual. In addition, let's look at the sole. The sole is the bottom of the shoe. These right here have a lot of traction. They are large. They basically thick soles like this are going to be for a more casual style. Other details that make these boots a little bit more casual. First up, that cap toe. Cap toes generally bring down formality of a shoe, just one small notch. In addition, the high contrast of the eyelets and the speed rings. Speed rings in general on boots are going to make it a more casual in style. Now, comparing the details on that last pair of boots with these, you can clearly see the difference. Same style. We've got a classic derby right here, but you can immediately notice change in color, darker. Black is going to be the most formal color. In addition, the sole. This thing definitely has traction, but it's not nearly as bulky or cumbersome as the other sole. When we look at the eyelets, not nearly as much high contrast. In addition, we do not have a cap toe. The reality is, gents, when it comes to derby style boots, there are tons of options out there. As you can see, this one right here, kind of in the middle, we've got a little bit lighter colored brown, but notice the change up in the lacing. We don't have the speed rings. We just got the eyelets, but not really high contrast. The lacing is a bit more casual but it doesn't have the cap toe. This would be a very comfortable pair to wear with dark jeans and a sports jacket and a button-up shirt. Now, if you're looking for a pair of boots to be able to dress up, to be able to wear with a pair of odd trousers with the sports jackets, look no further than brogues. Now, when I say brogue, what I'm talking about are perforations, designs, ornamentation that is carved into the leather. Understand it doesn't go all the way through the shoe, although historically they did. That being said, modern day brogues, I've never seen a pair that actually do that. Instead, they're there for ornamentation. Now, when it comes to ornamentation, you see a wide variety of different styles out there. You're going to see semi brogues, you're going to see quarter brogues, you're going to see full brogues, you're going to see long wing brogues. And if you want to sound really fancy, understand that any type of brogue work done on the toe of a shoe is called a medallion. That being said, the overall style of these shoes, from the finish of the leather to the eyelets to the laces, all of this screams, this is a dressier shoe that you want to wear with nice clothing. Now, gents, all the boots you've seen so far in today's video are brought to you by today's sponsor, Thursday Boots. Now, gents, for years, I've been talking about Thursday Boots because I love what they do. They bring high quality boots to you at an affordable price. In fact, when you go over to the website, those styles I was talking about earlier, check out their president collection. I absolutely love these boots right here in Mocha. Maybe you want that cap toe, then go check out the captains. This pair right here in their Jasper, absolutely beautiful. But maybe you want something a bit more casual with a more heavy, rugged sole that can get you more traction. Then check out this pair right here in Tobacco with their Storm King Lug Soles. And those wingtips I was just showing you, you can go grab those over at Thursday Boots. I have to admit, those are some of my favorite in my collection. Right here, we've got the number 77s. And if you like that darker pair, then check out the Dark Oak. This one right here is just so easy to be able to dress up. You get a pair of dark colored jeans and you can just go with a casual button down. You can mix it with a blazer, sports jacket. Yeah, that is a good look. And if you're a traveler like me, you are going to love their Cavaliers. When you're going through security, easily slip them on, slip them off. That being said, they are so easy, so versatile boots, especially you get the right color, the right contrast, depending on how you want to put that outfit together. Gents, Thursday Boots has free shipping, free returns, all at a price that's hard to believe. Guys, if you're looking for stylish boots at an affordable price, you need to check out Thursdays. Use the link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. The next boot style that every guy needs to know, 
combat boots. Now, there's a wide variety of different combat boots out there. These are jump boots. And I know this specifically because of the design right here of the shaft. This is the upper part of the boot that goes up and supports the ankle. And if you're jumping out of an airplane, if you've ever jumped out of an airplane in a military issue parachute, you know that you do not land gently. You've got to do the, uh, that five point roll, which doesn't work. Point being is you got to protect the ankles because if you roll those ankles, yeah, you are going to be screaming, corming, medic, get me some help. The idea of this is protection. And to this day, they still live up to it. Now, besides the high shaft right here, you notice also we've got the speed lacers right in here. These are your type of eyelets that basically make it very easy for the laces to come in and out. They're relatively expensive to manufacture and put on so you don't see them throughout the whole part of the boot. But down here, again, we've got just nice clean eyelets and overall same type of derby style, basically where you've got the back part of the shoe, the quarter being thrown onto the front part of the shoe, the vamp. And you've got a really easy to grab tongue right here. That's this part of the shoe that makes it more comfortable whenever you lace up the boots. Another distinguishing feature of combat boots are going to be the soles. They're going to be heavier. They're going to be thicker. They are going to be made to be able to get traction. All that being said, combat boots are casual. And when you wear these, understand that they are going to grab attention. These are not something you can dress up even if you go with a nice material like suede. No, you wouldn't really want to wear these with a sports jacket. Now, this next boot was made for the English by the Egyptians during World War II, according to some stories. The way that one goes is there were some English officers. They wanted a more lightweight desert boot that wouldn't have their feet sweating as much, would be very simple and practical. And they hired some Cairo cobblers to build out these boots based off a very simple design on the back of a napkin. And that is what we got here, the desert boot. Now, the big difference from all the other boot styles on this is going to be just how light the upper is typically on a desert boot. This is made for heat, for high temperature. At the same time, you want to provide a little bit of ankle support, but you don't need a whole lot. In addition, notice we've only got two eyelets right here. You will see some that have up to four, but usually it's not going to be, you're not going to have a high shaft here. You will find the overall design of desert boots, of chaka boots, are ones of just simplicity. The lightweight material, the over, the sole is going to have some traction, but it's not going to be overly built like we see a lot of the other boots. All that being said, this boot style has come a long way since World War II. We've seen a variety of different styles. Right here, as you can see, we've got the contrast in the sole. We've got pretty much a flat sole, which is going to give you a little bit more surface area, even a little bit more traction here. But these right here made to be very comfortable, maybe city walkers, something like like that. Overall, right here, you notice the top here, the last pair was suede. This is going to be a solid lightweight leather. But what does remain is the simplicity of the build. And these are really going to be casual boots. You can dress them down with jeans and a t-shirt, a Henley, maybe a button down. Maybe you could wear them with a sports jacket if you went with a little bit more of a formal pair. Maybe something like this. I, I don't know if these are formal, but you know, the blue suede right here definitely makes them unique. The darker color, you could wear this with maybe denim or maybe a pair of odd trousers, gray flannels. I think you could pull off the look. Now, guys, if you're enjoying today's video or if you enjoy boots more than you enjoy the company of your own family, then do me a favor and smash that like button. Seriously, gents, I appreciate it when you engage with these videos. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that, hey, this video is worth watching. The next style on this list, perhaps my favorite, is the Chelsea. As I mentioned earlier, I love this as a traveler going through security. It is so easy to slip these on, to slip them off, and they are incredibly versatile. You can dress them up, dress them down if they're the right style. Out. You could even pair these with a suit, more likely a casual suit, definitely with, you know, a sports jacket, odd trousers, but you could still wear these, you know, go with maybe a different color and boom, you're going to be able to wear these with jeans and a t-shirt. Seriously, if black's your color, you like black jeans, you got black v-neck t-shirts, you wear a pair of boots like this, this is where the attention is going to be focused. These are going to look good. You're going to get compliments and it's going to work with that combination really, really well. And if you want something with a higher contrast, you really want to draw attention to the boots, you want to, hey, show off the suede, then check out this color right here. Mixing this with blue denim, maybe just with a variety of dark colored t-shirts. You can go with a dark blue, you can go with a medium blue, you can go with a dark green, dark red, whatever it may be, understand the boots are going to stand front and center. That being said, they don't have to. And again, Chelsea's don't always have to be the dressed up boots. You simply change out the sole, go with, again, something a bit more rugged. Overall, this design right here is going to be your workhorse. Now, if Chelsea boots are too plain for you, you want to walk into a room and feel like a rock star, look like a rock star, then check out Jodhapur's. So, they originate in India, riding boots worn by the English, but I will tell you that this style right here is really, really 
really nice just simply because of the timeless look, how they can slip on and off. Yes, you've got a strap here, which is a working strap, so you can tighten them up a bit. There's just something different about them, especially if you go in a material not very common here. I've got a green suede. Yeah, you want something that grabs even a little bit more attention, then check out this pair right here of harness riding boots. Again, these are going to be in a style that they're made to be slipped on and off, although this pair right here has a zipper on the inside, which works perfectly fine. It makes it really easy to be able to take them on and off. You're also going to find on this particular style of the harness boot, they've really made these in a dress style. So, you've got like the leather sole right here, which is not going to give them a whole lot of traction. At the same time, it's going to give them a dressier feel, a much more delicate build, which is going to allow these right here to be dressed up. At the same time, the overall style is going to be one that commands attention. That being said, both of these styles have a storied history in keeping men in the saddle. Hence, that was the purpose of the heel to be able to fit right there in the stirrup and to be able to keep a man in place. And if he ever fell out of the saddle, he wouldn't be dragged by the horse and he would just, his shoes would just slip right off. And that leads us to the most iconic riding boot on this list, the American Western boot, also known as the cowboy boot. So, the cowboy boot for the last 200 years, this has been just a go-to piece. Hollywood has really made it an icon that so many guys want to own and wear. I grew up in Midland, Texas. We did have a bit of a ranch. So, I've always felt comfortable wearing these, although at the time, I really didn't wear them very often. I went to the University of Texas. I, I know that a lot of guys ask me, hey, how can I wear cowboy boots if I'm not a cowboy? Well, you simply put them on, you find a pair that fits you well, and you get used to wearing them. You practice wearing them, and then you don't feel weird wearing them out in public. But I would say, you know, find a pair that's comfortable, and there's a wide variety of different Western boots. If you're interested in learning more about Western boots, by the way, down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link over to an article that's going to have a complete infographic where I go into a lot more detail about this iconic piece. And speaking of iconic styles, let's talk about the moccasin style boot, often known as the moccasin work boot. What I love about this is just simply how comfortable these boots are, especially if you've got a wider foot, you need a larger toe box. That's exactly what this design brings to the table, is overall, you're going to find in general, these are going to be wider built, depending again on the company and, and what they're putting out. But I find that they are just incredibly comfortable simply by the design of the build. The front part of the shoe here, the vamp, what we notice is that you've got that tongue that comes out and is sewn together right up here. You've also got, you know, just the soles in general on a lot of these are going to be flat soles, so they are going to give you a bit more traction, more surface area that's going to touch the ground. From walking, spending a lot of time on your feet, you're going to find that overall the elevation of the foot is about, yes, the heel is going to be slightly elevated, but not as much as we see on a lot of other boots, and just a really simple, clean design that takes from it a North American, Native American heritage. Now, because of the moccasin design, and often we've got a high contrast between the sole and the upper, these in general are going to be casual. So, they're fine for wearing, you know, with just casual shirts, jeans. These really are not the type of boots that you want to dress up. They're great, again, if you're able to find these, you know, or you need something like this for work, especially if you're able to find a steel toe. But, uh, you know, in general, these are going to be more casual style boots that you would wear on the weekends or just running errands around town, not something that you'd want to dress up and wear to work unless you work in a very casual workplace. Next up, let's talk about the hiking style boot. So, this boot is going to be made very simply. Notice that there's actually not pieces of leather sewn together. And the idea here, is that you could actually make these very water resistant. So, historically, these boots would be treated with a variety of different oils to be able to repel the water and keep it out. They would also use a Goodyear welt. So, that's going to be the type of construction where you're using a welt and it's going to be much more water resistant. They're going to have a decent amount of traction on the bottom. And when it comes to the lacing systems, they are right here. As you can see, we've got speed rings on them right here. This is going to make it very easy to be able to tighten these, to loosen them, and take them on and off with no problem. Hiking boots historically also had liners on the inside or a little bit of insulation made a little bit thicker to be able to better protect from the elements, the cold temperatures. At the same time, they didn't want to overdo this. Early explorers would actually wear a variety of different thicknesses of socks, which I think still a lot of people do. But the idea here is you provided a little bit more protection from the wind and from the elements at a higher altitude. Now, this next boot, the duck boot, is an interesting one because it probably would have remained an obscure regional boot to Maine if not not picked up as a fashion item by students in the Northeast. And this happened, I don't know, maybe it was the 50s, 60s, but it really picked up steam. But I mean, it's a very practical boot. The bottom half of this boot is made with rubber, then it's attached to a leather upper. A simple, 
practical design. If you're dealing with slush, if you're dealing with rain, if you want something that yeah, is just a simple boot to be able to deal with the elements. And because it became a fashion item, this was actually one that people were dressing up and they were just wearing it for the hell of it. So, it's an interesting one that actually was able to break the rules and people were wearing this with a wide variety of combinations. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about why the ladies love a man in boots? Seriously, I improved this video. I made it even better. If you ever watch this one, you need to check it out, especially if you want to attract the ladies. Guys, I go into the science. I go into the details right here. Boom, yeah, click on it. It's a good one. Seriously.